Christ, the God of the storm. I want to introduce you, ladies and gentlemen, to the God of the storm. Uh, I see the building. You guys need to know what God has done for you. It is an amazing thing. In the midst of the storm. Ezekiel times where is it where stormy times were times of trouble, times of distress, times of danger. How many of you have ever walked through a storm? There are people here, even right now, you are going through a storm. David the psalmist in Psalm 18, verse 9, describes God coming down with a storm. And God was speaking to me in Kampala and he says I am the God of the storm I am not afraid of the storm in fact I sit in the midst of the storm and I want to speak to you today about four storms four types of storms in the name of Jesus and I do not know what storm you are going through right now but we are in need of encountering the God who rules over the storm. And tonight we break some of those storms and we end them in the name of Jesus. We just need to know every storm has a beginning and an end. If you are making notes, no storm lasts forever. Storms come and storms go. Even that storm will end. A storm lasts forever. There are all kinds of storms. There are storms of the home, storms of the marriage, financial storms. There are church storms. Is that the move of God? There are financial storms. There are marital storms. There are parenting storms. There are church storms. But no storm lasts forever. Storms come and storms go. Touch your neighbor, tell them your storm will end. Your storm will end. In fact, the moment a storm begins, it signals its end. Because from that day, the clock begins to tick. I, I just want to give you a basic introduction as we, we lay a foundation tonight. Storms come and storms go. Every storm has a purpose. Every storm has a purpose and a source. Every storm has a purpose and a source. Are you still with me? Every storm demands a response. Every storm must be responded to. Every storm demands a response. Some storms you just have to outlast. Are you hearing me? Some storms you just have to outlast. You have to sit and let it blow over. Some of them have to be stopped. So I'm, I'm not here, you know, I'm not a gimmicky preacher. I'm not the kind who come and tell you everything is going to be right today. I'm telling the truth. Some storms will blow until they end. Hello. Am I still your friend? Some you just have to outlast. But some have to be stopped. Every storm demands a response. And today I bring to you four storms from the scriptures. Number one, are you ready to go? Amen. Let's go for this. Number one, the storm of Jonah. The storm of Jonah. This is in Jonah chapter 1 and verse 1. I call it the storm of rebellion. The storm of disobedience. Jonah Chapter 1, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Continue. 
But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid for the fare, one way, no return. And he went down into it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. What happened next? Next verse, next verse, next verse. Next verse, next verse. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was almost breaking. I want to stop there. I won't read anymore. You guys know the Bible. Somebody said the storm of disobedience. Storms break out when we are heading the wrong direction. Hello. Storms sometimes break out because of disobedience. When you are going the wrong direction, making wrong decisions, teaming up with the wrong people, storms can break out in your life. Hear the word of the Lord. Some of the storms that hit us are not really an issue, or is it from the devil, is it from God? The issue is, am I walking right? Am I going the right direction? And we need discernment. Attach your neighbor and tell them, don't start storms in your own life. I put my hand up first. I have started some storms for myself by going contrary to where God is telling me to go. God tells Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah buys a one-way ticket to Tarshish. It's virtually opposite directions. And the tension that you create between God's will and your will can create a storm. And what God does is he sends a storm you know where the story ends. The problem is when, as a child of God, I disregard the will of God and the purpose of God for my life, I will generate tensions in my home, in my finance, in my body. And a point comes, you know, when you read the story, allow me to breeze quickly over this. When you see the story, Jonah goes into the boat and sleeps. This is a cargo ship. They are passengers. They are goods. They are commodities. And the whole place goes crazy. Sometimes things go crazy in your life because you've taken up a Jonah and you're giving him a lift. <laughs> when you team up with Jonah, problems can hit you. And the Bible says these men began to call on their God. You see, this disobedient believers cause demonic revivals. They began to each one call upon their God. A demonic revival breaks out. They begin to say their prayers. And they ask, what is this? What's going on? They then begin to look for all whose account is this? They find Jonah sleeping. <laughs> Be not big. The sleep of disobedience. They wake him up, they say, who are you? Who do you worship? He says, I worship the God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea. <laughs> you stupid man. <laughs> How can you use the sea to flee from the God of the sea? They then ask him, what shall we do to you? He says, he cast me in the water. Throw me to the storm. It is me it is looking for. Sometimes the storm is looking for you. I, I, I don't want to stay too long on this storm because I have four, three others to talk about. Sometimes the storm is looking for you. Before they throw Jonah over, cargo has been lost. They throw cargo over to lighten the ship. Trouble, trouble, trouble. 
In the name of Jesus, we rebuke disobedience in this house. I rebuke the spirit of disobedience. In this seventh annual conference, we want to declare, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Lift up your hand and say, I will not fight God. I will not go in a different direction. What he says, I will do. Where he sends me, I will go. Amen. They throw him into the water and he's picked up by a fish. You remember? Picked up by a fish and spends three nights in one star accommodation. Until he's vomited back to his purpose. When he gets up, no one that needed the repents. When somebody comes looking like he's been vomited from the mouth, the stomach of a fish, you just have to repent. <laughs> but I thank God for a God of a second chance. God of a second chance, and even when we get it wrong, he is able to rescue us out of the storm. I speak to you, child of God. I don't know who it is. You went opposite to where God wanted you to go. You went and married a mad man when you shouldn't have. Oh, yes, I've got to say it. Sometimes we start storms and God wants to say, oh, through, don't even think about it. I thank God that is a God of restoration and rescue. The God who picks me up when I fall. God who sets me back on track and says, now walk in my way. The fish vomits him and the Lord says to him, God says to him, go to me. <laughs> because the calling of God is undoubtedly great. You may delay it, but you cannot deny it. What God has declared on your life must be executed, must be done. And now is the time I declare, this night is the time for us to turn around and return yeah. to the divine mission that God commanded you to go to. Yeah. The storm will end because you are back where God wants you to be an enemy, heard the word of the Lord. Because my God is a God of a second chance. Now tell your neighbor, God is giving you a second chance. What is the God of the second chance? May that storm end. May that storm end. May the troubles that have come, Lord, we are praying right now in Jesus' name. The troubles that have come over our lives because of wrong decisions and going against your will. Tonight we ask that they come to an end. We ask that those storms will end today in the name of Jesus. No more raging, no more winds, no more trouble. We humble ourselves and we return to mission that your name may be glorified. Clap your hands, all you people, if you know our name. Now, the second storm, the second storm I call the storm of intimidation. Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. Reading from the scriptures, Mark chapter 4, verse 35. The storm of intimidation. And the same day when even evening was come, he said to them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when they had when he had sent away the multitude, he took him um, even as he was in the ship, and they were also with him, other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the back part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they woke him and said to him, Master, do you not care that we die? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Where, why are you so faithful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Somebody said, A storm of intimidation. Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. 
How many of you have received an instruction from God? And God is saying, well, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to take on. And suddenly, in the midst of your obedience, not disobedience, but obedience, suddenly in the midst of you doing what God says, all hell breaks loose. All madness breaks loose. And Jesus is asleep. Have you ever been in a trial or a situation and it seems God is asleep? And the storm is all over the place and they try. These were accomplished fishermen. They were accomplished. They were accustomed to, to the Sea of Galilee and, and these, all these lakes where they would go fishing. By the time a fisherman panics, you need to be afraid. And they try and try until they go to Jesus and say, Do you not care that we are perishing? And what it was was a demonic attack, really. Because right across the other side, they were, Jesus was to minister to a gathering demoniac. That man who had taken over a whole territory, taken over the burial fields. No one could do funerals anymore. I can imagine the last ones who tried. <laughs> he sent them running with their body. <laughs> Took over the funeral area. The Bible says he'll be screaming in the night, cutting himself with stone. There was a territorial demonic presence all over the place. And Jesus says, let us go across. Sometimes the missions that God is wanting us to achieve are so intimidating of the devil that he sends a storm to distract you and to intimidate you. Is anybody hearing what I am saying? Yeah. And he stirs up a storm to intimidate them, to distract them, to stop them. I'm here to declare we will get to where God wants us to get. Yeah. We will not be stopped. We will not be intimidated. Storms of intimidation. There are things that God wants you to do. And just because you are opposed, just because things are contrary, does not mean God is not in it. Yes. Please hear me. Amen. Just because you've received intimidation and opposition, does not mean God is not in that assignment. Does not mean God wants, does not want you to bless you in it. And we need to learn how to stick to what God said and sail forward anyway. Against obstacles. Against intimidation, against threats. Oh, you guys have a building, beautiful place here, and I understand you got planning. We fought for our planning for three years. Three years of fighting with the council. I don't know how it was in the other place. But we were given an eviction notice after we had put over 300,000 pounds in the building. The council of Sadak, which is where we are, the council said you should not even have tried. They showed us evidence of churches which have tried to use that building and were thrown out. The only confidence we knew is that God had said, let us go across. Amen. Is anybody here? I had to stand before God and say, God, are you trying to kill me? Are you trying to kill me, God? When I saw the letters, somebody went to council and brought a file this thick. Every church that had tried had been told, no, no, no. There was no law to cover us. There were no bylaws to cover us. There was no appeal. We got an eviction notice. They gave us six months to get out. We tried everything. But when I went before the Lord, God said to me, is it not I who has chosen this building? Amen. And we waited upon God. Let me tell you, friends, God is awesome and mighty in all his ways. He can do anything he wants. And we were refused twice. We placed in an appeal. And this lawyer came, very elegant English gentleman. 
And we sat before him, we presented our case. He came, looked at the building, and we showed him all the money we had put in and all the youth work we did. He looked very understanding. 21 days later, he wrote and said, I agree with the council. You cannot use the building. And I, I agree with the enforcement that you must be removed. We fought from there like you should have seen me. Let me tell you, friends, when things get tough, the tough get bold. When the storms of life arise and all hell breaks loose, there is a God in heaven who walks with the sons of men through storms. And he keeps quiet through the storm. Anybody hear me? He knows how to go to sleep and says, remember what I said to you at the beginning. If you forget, go and revise. <laughs> and so we were advised, you need politicians to get involved. You need counselors. You're just not sure. I, 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 I sometimes hear people think, saying that they knew exactly. Many times in my life, I don't know. I'm not married, you are not sure, but you are sure. 